Hello, everybody. It's Keith. Help support the Northeast scene and declare yourself a member today. Subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or your podcast medium of choice. Rate us and leave a review. Every little bit helps. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It has every podcast episode plus other exclusive content. Like and leave a comment. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the NE Scene. Also, continue to write us at northeastscene at gmail.com. We want to share your experiences as well. And now, here's the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Northeast Scene Podcast. This is Keith. And Tommy. All right, folks, we're going right into it. Here's part two of our discussion with Anthony Green. Enjoy. So as uh, Anthony Green folklore goes, you bailed on Sayuthin, you come back, and Colin scoops you right up, and you start writing Handshakes at Sunrise right away. Is that true? Yeah. Well, yeah, right away. Now, smart move on Colin's part, not waiting even a second, because I would have at least waited a day and then been like, hey, you want to uh, maybe start a band? But he got right in there. So we started a band before I even left to go back. He was like, I'll do it. I'll do whatever. He had like a couple songs he recorded on his own that I was like in love with. And yeah. I was already singing. Like, I remember sitting in his room, him playing me the songs. I actually feel like at one point he was just playing an acoustic guitar for me. And then yeah. he played a song that was like a keyboard drum beat and acoustic guitar. It sounded like it sounded more like the circa that is coming out right now, ironically enough, as opposed to the circa that I feel like came out like when with Handshakes of Sunrise, which was a lot of like um Thursday and Mars Volta and Coheen Cambria ripoffs, which I think like the engine down ripoffs and like shit like that, like Denali, like like I feel like that was like we were like very heavily influenced by like Deftones and Sony D Real Estate. And, but um we, the stuff he was making that made me want to fucking fall that made me fall in love with him was like really weird, like not twist style, like like postal service style shit. And I remember going back to California and probably going through some withdrawal from whatever fucking uh fucking pain medication i was taking for my dry sockets from getting my fucking wisdom teeth out and i and i had a layover in phoenix arizona which is a magical airport and i got off the plane and i was didn't want to take off i didn't want to go um i found out later that uh that meredith like i couldn't find my id to get on the plane and meredith had stolen it but i couldn't find it but i got on anyway somehow like i talked my way on the fucking plane without an id this was <laughs> wow yeah and this was after 9-11, which, so that's impressive. That is um, impressive. Yeah. And uh, so, and there wasn't like you could do, I didn't have a Wikipedia. You know what I mean? I probably had a fucking, I probably had a criminal record still. But so <laughs> I got on the, and I got into the airport and I turned to this woman at the desk at like United Air, like, and I was like, I made a huge mistake and I need to go back home right now. Please help me. She was like, click, 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 click. There you go. Your plane leaves in an hour. Click, 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 click. Go get something to eat at the bar. Here's a fucking whatever. And I was like, thanks. She was like, <laughs> she was like yeah, every once in a while you get an angel. Wow. Tell you what, Keith, Tommy. If every once in a while you got you get an angel and there's some fucking thing that happens like that, they I got I accidentally got like a dozen of them. Because there were so many times that I either fucking should have been dead or should have been arrested or something sh just should not have gone the way that it went. Something was looking out for me, you know. And uh, I, 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 I realize that there's some benevolent force at, at play. I, I at least feel connected to something that I, I oh, greater than myself that I, I feel like is at play that has helped me avoid some serious, serious like damage to myself and others. So uh big shout out to fucking whatever that the mystery of whatever that shit is. I'm with you on that. I, I don't put a name to it, but I can feel it sometimes. Actually, you'll like this, Anthony. One time, you know, it was a cool fall day. I'm walking to my Tuesday night thing and I'm in a good mood and I'm feeling good. The weather's perfect. And Sayosin just put uh I can tell an accident happened here earlier. It's something yeah. called something like that. It was, yeah. They just put it up on Spotify and I was listening to it and I'm walking and I'm going to meet up with my friends and I felt it. I felt 
that thing. And I was like, everything's going to be okay. And is this recently? Yeah, this was just like within the last yeah. six or seven months or something. Yeah, they like redid the music and they were like, hey, do you want to do the redo the vocals? And at the time I was in this depressed funk and I didn't have my recording set up. And I was like, no, nah, keep the old shit, man. I like the way it sounded. <laughs> and they made it sound better. Yeah, I love that song. That's cool, man. Don't you love how music has the capability of doing that? Like, it's there's nothing to do with me. Like, I didn't make that feeling. That feeling exists in music, and it has, exists in any dummy that gets some, any dumb fucking buddy that gets in front of the microphone, you know, and starts like be, being trying to be as honest as they possibly can, you know, like that has that thing, you know. Um, any song that can give me that feeling, I love it. That's that's what I live for. That's me my too. natural thrill thinking high thing. Yeah. I think, and and that's my goal is to just like, and from the beginning of like trying to sound like the promise ring or like fucking braid or like, you know, that I am one, even though I couldn't play was like, I just want to make a, I just want to be inside of that feeling. You know what I mean? Is like kind of erotic. Is that like me weird or weirdly like, like erotic as that sounds like I want to just be every part of that feeling i want to create that feeling you know i see other people creating it like it radiates out of their instruments and their voices and i want to try to do it it's like watching some it's like when you're in fucking grade school and the rollerblading demo people come in for the afternoon assembly right around yeah. like springtime when they like start get like really getting light on the curriculum and you're like oh shit and like rollerblading people come in and do their shit and you're like I think I'm going to get me some rollerblades. Exactly. You yeah. I, but exa- I remember but this that. is way cooler than that. And it outlasts the rollerblades. Yeah. So Circa Survive. Now, the band has made quite a mark for themselves. So you and Colin are starting this thing up. I remember a buzz in Bucks County because you were back. I heard this band was coming together. Uh, I didn't know who was involved or what it was going to be. But I knew that I wanted to try to get into it just like everybody else in Bucks County, probably. So did you have a lot of people hitting you up? Like, Hey, I hear something's going on. Maybe I can uh, come by. Not really. You know, I, I kind of felt like, I kind of felt like, um, like the outsider, you know, like I felt like everybody, like I didn't, like, I didn't really know any, but after a while, like everybody sort of started hanging out and had their own thing and like had friends and like, I hung out with Colin and like guys in the band, but like, I didn't really, yeah. I, I, when I was back in the area, I, I felt weird and like, I loved it. Like I loved being in the band, but I definitely didn't feel like, like there would be times where I would like go to the diner and I would see people and I would be like, Hey, and like, (laughs) and I would go sit by myself, you know what I mean? With people that I used to know and like hang out with, but like just didn't really hang with anymore. And I felt like it, I felt like a dummy, like, a lot of the time and I was insecure. So like, you know, and people were nice to me and shit like Mike and Gary were always super nice to me. You were always super nice to me, you know, but they were like all like with a straggler people that were always around that were like, you know, um, uh, fucking who else was so super cool. Pat, he was the man. He was always so fucking nice to me, man. Even though I knew I was annoying to him, he was just always just like, "Ah, (laughs) yeah, you're cool. Like you were in that cool band with Tommy. Like you're cool. You know, like, so like yeah, when I I remember coming back and feeling like fuck, I I feel like an asshole and nobody likes me. I remember you came back and I was like fuck, I'm gonna go over and hang out with Anthony and go swimming. <laughs> like I was, <laughs> I was excited. I was like, wait, is your parents' pool open? You're like, yeah, dude. I'm like, fuck, I'm coming over. Dude, I, all I did was smoke weed and hang out and like I honestly, dude, at that point, like I I felt like I was done. Like I was I was like, dude, I I there's like ten people that know about my band. Like I have a band that like got a record deal with Equal Vision Records. Like, hey, the fuck, oh, like I feel so so fucking cool. Like I feel like I have this whole world I can play in. Like I was like on the tip of that vagabond thing, but I I was like, dude, I have a ticket to this vagabond thing. Like, I yeah. have a label that wants to buy me a van and guys that want to be in my band and let me sing stuff over their shit and like have a relationship with me. You know, that was like different. Like. I, I it, not that the Wasayosin relationship wasn't cool, but like these guys were like, like I just feel like I resonated with them a little bit differently, or yeah. like maybe I communicated with them differently because I knew them. I don't know. Like I fucking love those Wasayosin dudes, but like when I when I started Circa, like it was so fun and exciting. It was like you know, 
a new thing. And it, it, we, we had some limit. We didn't want to be a hardcore band, you know, but we wanted to still be intense. And I think that those limitations gave us a, a sort of freedom. Yeah. And that's one ta- from talking to several other members of the band on the show. That's one common thing that everyone said is we wanted to be done with hardcore and just the heavy music in general. Yeah. I mean, I became so obsessed with the Mars Volta. Yeah. Like just so obsessed with the Mars Volta. And I already was just like, I already was obsessed with at the drive in to the point where like I would have gotten like the stereo fucking from Via tattooed on me. Like <laughs> I literally got tattoos that I saw. I, 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 anyways, I was obsessed with them. And then, like I remember when I was in California, I was working at the Fearless Warehouse and I remember folding merch orders for like for people that ordered like at the drive in shirts and being like, damn, that's so sick. <laughs> <laughs> um like <clears throat> like um and once in a blue moon there'd be like a Seosin shirt and I'd be like, Oh my god. <laughs> like, oh my god, that's my band, you know? Like, or I'd see my band like C D on the smart punk thing, like next to a thing, and I'd just be like, dude, that's it. Like I'm good. You know, like, isn't shit. that the best? Like someone will post an Instagram story of them driving in the car, listening to this podcast. And I'll text Tommy and be like, can you believe people are driving around listening to us two dumbasses? Dude, I, I love isn't it. Isn't that the coolest feeling? Like, it's just like, because it's like something you're making and sharing goes out there. And it's like, oh, there's just a, there's just, oh, there's, it's the best. Just, there's something beautiful and very primal about it. It's, I'm a creator. I am a creator. I will always create. It'll be different things, but that's that's it. In some way, in some way, you guys are like just dancing around a fire, you know, just like our fucking, just like our 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 four peoples. Oh I, yes, I just think the biggest thing with like when you see stuff like that, like if somebody driving around and they're like, "Hey, here's this." Like they took a picture of them like in their satellite radio, and they were like listening to it. And I was like, "Oh shit!" Like that's our thing. Like, that's the thing we do. Like, that's our, that's our thing that we do together. And somebody else out there is enjoying it. And it's like, it's such a, a, it's such a good feeling to be like, look, something that we made, somebody literally is spending time listening to. And I'm like, in my head, I'm going like, they're listening to the episode where we talk shit about fucking, you know, like our favorite Simpsons episodes or like, (laughs) you know, like stuff that I'm like. This is us just shooting the shit, just talking and people. Well, that's the thing is like people want to connect, dude. And it's like your friends, but then it's like your friends. And then it's like people that extend. Like I met a guy, there's a guy that I talked to at the skate park who was in the minor times for a minute. And he knows of the podcast. And we were talking to about you guys and like old shows and like, you know, like there's like a whole place where like people from that era of time and music like there's not like a huge place for us to gather and talk. You know what I mean? Right. And so like a place for like a podcast is so perfect for play- people like that. Like for like worlds of people who like really like niche things like, all right, cool. Well, I love listening. I love to listen to people talk about music so I can find like a muse- a podcast like this. I can go listen to like Rick Rubin talking about like making early hip hop records. I yeah. can go listen to like interviews with like Steve Albany. You know what I mean? Like things are fun. Like, and it, it gives a good, you know, it's, it's like putting something cool into the world and you're sharing an experience, you know, maybe somebody who is interested in starting a band, you know, hears you talk to one of an artist that they like and is like, Oh shit, man. Like I want to start a band or like maybe somebody you're interviewing, did something else, you know, that that isn't, you know, it's, it's, it's just spreading and spreading the joy, you know? Oh, big time. And that's why I started this. Cause I was going to shows alone. I was listening to the music alone. I was like, where the fuck are my people? I would like go see Caven and it would be an incredible set. And I'd post it on Instagram and all the normie people just, I'm like, where the fuck is everybody? Like, but I found them. Yeah. So that's, doing the, it. that's the thing is like, I think that in a lot of ways I can relate to what you just said about how you did that with the podcast about what, what like music kind of became for me was like, I saw the scene that was around and I like wanted, I saw everything that was happening around me. And I, I was in, then I went to California and I just like Circa became a thing where all of us got together and decided like, all right, we're going to like, basically just, we're basically just going to throw the fucking dart, you know, and, and, paint the bullseye around wherever it lands 
yeah. you know, and, and, and just try to do something different than we've done before and, um, and go for it. And it, that was a thing. So it was like, you know, all right, you have this podcast, you're just going to do it. You know, like we were like, all right, we have this way of communicating. We're just going to try to do it together in a way that feels right, build it in the way that we like it and see what happens. It's a really cool story because it's almost like fate, how it all came together, how all the members met up, how Nick came in from California, how Steve came in, how everyone had the same idea in mind and everyone's living together and working together all towards this common cause. It was like, um, it was like, I think how a lot of people had experiences in college, like going to college for the first time. Like my first experience going to college was just like an extremely opiate Xanax fucking <laughs> alcohol induced blur. I really don't. I black out so much. Like I was in college for like an actual second before I was in rehab and then was at home like working and going to community college and making high and driving demos. Yeah. So I don't, when I moved in with, with Circa, my parents was were like, you know, all right, cool. You're fucking out on your own now. And I was like, yeah, fuck you. I got a fucking record deal and I have $5,000. I'm going to make it last the rest of my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that $5,000 was gone in like three months. Wow. We got a house. We got a van. I bought fucking three, two ounces of weed. You know what I mean? Like probably half a pound of weed maybe. I don't know. I was fucking, I was like fucking Mr. Chronic for a whole second there. It, it was cool. It was really good experience. And they, I would be up all night getting wasted and driving around and like trash picking and like going to people's houses and doing sketchy things with sketchy people. And, and the band would be sleeping and I would come home at like six in the morning and like put vocals to whatever they worked on until like 10 or 11 and I'd go to sleep. And then, <laughs> and they, they would get up and jam all day. And I would sleep on the couch and I'd wake up at like five or six and then I would go and steal food from the grocery store, like cheese and tortillas and like beyond, like not beyond, they were like morning star chicken nuggets. And I would, we would make, we would make fucking quesadillas and ramen and like we would make shit. And then I would go out and be sketchy as fuck all night and just try to get fucked up and do crazy shit. And then they would make a cool song and I'd get home and get, I'd get back to the house and be like, faded and listening to it on the old recording program and like they taught me how to set they'd have it all set up for me or they'd come in and i would just like sing babble shit over it some of it lyrics some of it just whatever and um i didn't really write lyrics for any of the songs on juturna until like the night before we were in the studio some of the lyrics got were like in the stream of co stream of conscious jamming that i would do but when i would write the songs and the melodies i wouldn't write words really i would just kind of start singing and some words would come out yeah and that's how the song would really get formulated and like most of the time the words that came out were like the, the rest of the song was painted around whatever that vibe just happened to be that's how i do it too i would get the syllables first and sometimes a, a word or a phrase would pop out and i would build everything around that yeah so i just started doing this really fun thing with actually i did uh, uh two of two of these today with one of them was with keith and tim from good old war tim arnold and keith goodwin and one of them was with um ben the drummer from group love and some of the guys from taking back sunday um and they're two one of the they both started with just vocal and drum beat so it's like we got a drum beat just started singing something over it and then did everything we're going to put the music around that and with the, the project with the guys from group love um there's no real instruments it's just vocals and the percussion is just like tapping away at the table and shit and like affecting that stuff with effects on the computer and the stuff with keith and tim were just like an experiment where if we're like okay if we just sing a bunch of crazy weird rhythms like over a weird beat like what if we made a song out of it like that I think there's like a there's like a Lee Scratch Perry record that he did with Andrew WK, <laughs> where I think like Andrew WK said he just like had Lee Scratch Perry come in and like just sing a bunch of crazy shit to like some beats and then they made all the music around it. So this music you're working on, when are we going to see this and in what form? Is this Anthony Green solo? Is this a new thing? 
So I have like all of these irons in the fire right now that I'm not touring. So like for a minute, I was like getting like just coming out of the ashes of being a fucking like dying and uh, ODing and having to like get uh, well, like so last year around this time I OD'd and um, and straight up like had to be brought back to life and uh, what came home and was at like the worst spot of my addiction and um, just like in a funk from it, you know, trying to come out of it and really having a difficult time coming out of it. You know, like I, you know, came home and I was like, got into, and I, I had been, I got clean in October and got out of rehab in November and was clean for a little while and then relapsed and died and then came home like trying to get my shit together and was just in this depressed funk and just couldn't get my shit together man and it took me a minute to really get my fucking head on my ass and start really getting back into my life and um i started just like taking this pandemic happened right when circa was supposed to go on tour and do this big tour and um we were writing, going to write stuff and it just fucked my whole shit up, man. And it made, it made it made my depression, anxiety, my mania, everything like twice as bad. So I really, I had to like sink or I was, you know, you, you sink your swim, you know? And so I had to fucking pull my shit together and figure out how well, I was going to uh, like best survive. And like, I needed to set a goal for myself, little here goals here and there. And, staying clean, staying healthy and active, keeping a support system around me. And then also just like this, being able to record myself at home and write really has opened the door. Like we started writing more with Circa. I said, been saying yes to more projects like with people that I can work with. And like that keeps my, my creative card. I'm punching that every day. And that makes me feel like I belong on the earth. And, you know, stuff like this connecting with people makes me feel like I belong on the earth when like, you know, like normal shit that people expect you to say, like your kids and your everything, your job is supposed to make you just feel a certain way. It's not. It's the work that comes into connecting in a, in a true and honest way that, that really makes you feel like you belong and that you're meant to be like surviving. You're meant to be carrying on this fucking gene. So, or these, this DNA sequence, whatever we are, this information. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's producing things, creating things is really what gives me confidence and makes me feel like I'm really doing something. And we come into the world doing it, Keith. You see a child, a child, you give a child like a fucking crayon and a piece of paper and they're just going to make shit and they're not going to you you can't decipher whether it's good or bad cuz it just is something. And it's great because the child made it and the child is pure. And we get older and we're like, okay. And I, we see an adult make something and we're like, that's not very cool or that's pretentious or that's not as good as this other person, you know? And it's like, we forget. And that's just not how things are supposed to be. And like, I get something resonating with you and not resonating with you. I also get being critically, you know, uh, uh, you know, like being able to be critically decisive and say, this is not something I enjoy, you know, but, but, but holding that against somebody or making that some kind of ethos is like, I fell into that trap too. You know, what I'm going through right now is very freeing. It's experimental. I can't tour, but I can make more music and experiment. And it's like the time to do it for me. You know, like I'm either going to do that or I'm going to be so bummed that I can't tour. Like by the time touring comes back, dude, I'm going to be in better shape than I've ever been in. I'm going to have learned about more stuff with music i'm gonna have made more music and have music in my back pocket i'm gonna make two records for when after i die so people will be like oh fuck dude is he dead <laughs> you know like i got all this shit planned dude i'm writing the funnest most in tune with myself shit that i've ever written and and that's what every fucking dumbass says you know but uh it, it, honestly getting the pandemic just making you fucking leveling me has been so helpful because no matter how grounded or humble I think I might have been or whatever, like, dude, I can't do shit now. doesn't fucking matter whether you tour in a van or a tour bus. doesn't fucking matter whether you're making um, a million streams or whatever. Like everyone's fucked unless you're like some big fucking rich person. And then whatever, congratulations. There's an art form. There's an art form to making money 
from music too. That was never my goal. Like, and, and so I'm getting way more in touch with my goal, which is just like trying shit, doing stuff that gives me that buzz where I'm like, oh, I'm excited to get up this morning because I have to work on this song that I get to send to so and so. And then yeah. we get to put it through and like make a cool thing. And if I want, I can just put it on fucking Bandcamp. And if I want, I can put it on Bandcamp and make all the fucking proceeds go wherever the fuck I want. Yeah. It's, it must be great to have so many options like that and so many cool people to work with. Dude, I've been so lucky in my life that like I can just do, I can call, I call up a hundred people right now and be like, hey, send me, I have stuff on my phone right now. It's just like, hey, send me shit. People are just like, hey, like drummers that I admire, like, like Tucker rule, you know, like, like, well, wow. like, like a drummer that I literally admire and I admired for years. And I watched from afar before I was ever even in band. Funny story about that dude is I fucking, I, I, I got backstage at a warp tour before I was ever even in a band before I was ever in Sayosin. And I was like, they were asking me to move out to California and I was going to see like my girlfriend at the times, like friend was in Mighty Mighty Boss Tones or something or playing the horn player, knew the horn player, Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. I somehow weaseled my way backstage <laughs> with them. They did it. I didn't do shit actually. So, and then I saw Thursday and they were just, just getting huge. And I had gotten full collapse that year. And I had also seen them in New Brunswick like a year earlier and was like fuck this band rules yeah. Jamin, Jamin Warren from LaSalle actually Tommy's friend got me into them guy I heard the waiting EP and I was like well, this is fucking incredible dude yeah it sounded like keepsake and I was like oh my god this is so sick they're, it sounded like keepsake they're from New Jersey and uh, they were always playing and um I and uh, I remember being so obsessed with the full collapse record and I remember watching them play and Tucker was the sexiest man and I actually being like was like attracted to him. Like I still am. Like he's a very attractive man. He is. I digress. <laughs> so <laughs> I went up to him after the show and him and like Tom were like breaking down. I was like, hey guys, great set. Like, hey, do you know the guys from Open Hand? Are they cool? They like asked me to join a band. Like, should I do it? And they were like, they actually took the time to talk to me. And they were like, yeah, like I remember Justin, like Isham. And I was like, no, these guys were like in the band and they're like, I think they kind of remembered Bo. Yeah. Zach, I think they remember, but another guy was named Zach. He ended up playing with Ashley Simpson later on, but he left the band because the other guitar player had sex with his girlfriend. And it was a whole drama. I loved being a part of, I ate it up. <laughs> I was like, fuck yeah, dude, let's fucking, I moved, I just dropped out of my parents' house. I'm living in California. I was living in this guy's couch. Then the guitar player fucked his girlfriend. I didn't have a place to go. Like they were like, the guitar player is better than you as a bass player. So they kicked them out. I was like, oh my God, dude, this is crazy. And I actually liked the bass player better, like way better. So I was like, fuck, what do I do? I'm living with this guy. And then I moved in the guitar player's garage. <laughs> but then we got this bass player who was like the fucking man. And yeah. he's still one of my favorite people. I named my last kid uh, after him, um, Jack Boosty Green. Wow. Um, uh, he's like a sp my spirit guru. He's my Sherpa through life. So the Thursday guys told you, go for it. They were it. like, dude, go for it. And they were nice to me. And I, I'm sure I was an annoying person. I don't even know if they had actually remember. I feel like I might have told this story to somebody else too. But like, they were just like, yeah, cool. Do it, man. Go out there. Do it. They're cool dudes. Yeah, it'll be fun. That's where you want to go. That's where it's all happening. You know, like they were like nice, you know? Yeah. And uh, oh man, Tucker was so hot. And then I, you know, like now, like I literally, I, he just sent me. He sent me a song today and I'm like, fuck, that's so cool. Like I'm, I'm very lucky in that way. And in that I have, I have, uh, I've been given a lot, you know, and I, I want to make sure that, um, I'm taking, I, I, I'm making something cool with it. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about some shit you've got going on and what we can expect. Now, number one, we've got the Circus Survive Patreon, right? There's yep. a lot of shit going on there. We got a podcast. We've got cover songs. We've got reworks of existing circus songs. The Circus Survive Patreon is like a part time job, you know, uh, yeah. part time slash full time job. Like we're doing covers. Um, it, it also, I gotta say this: like I, I hate keeping it in, but like we're writing a ton. Yeah, <laughs> we got some shit on deck. We got some shit we're stirring around. We're not trying to talk about it really. Like, and this is fine to say it because like I always say too much anyway. It's like my fucking MO. <laughs> but um uh I, I can say that like there's like we're we're working on shit 
aside from the the Patreon stuff, which is like a lot of work and uh, really rewarding too. Like we do a cool podcast on there. We do the covers. I have a cooking show on there, which is like my a fucking favorite thing. I'm going to start a thing where I take pictures of myself kissing dogs my, and um, putting that up there exclusively on Patreon. <laughs> uh, and like it's just a fun project, you know? And so that's really rewarding and re- and, and actually helping us get through um, – it's get, helping us get through this time. And I think we're going to work on new music that it's just going to be with the music, new music we're working on. I think is we're definitely going to do some stuff that is going to be just exclusive for that. You know what I mean? Um, and, uh, but we're just, we're really excited about a lot of shit that I just, I can't even get into because it's, there's not enough organization behind it to get into, but when there is fuck yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. And everything sort of splinters out from there. I have like sales and stuff I'm working on. I have Sound of Animals record that we're like just starting to chip away at and listen to and get into the idea. Um, I started a project called Let's Start a Band that was originally an idea that happened like eight years ago when I first went into rehab. I started writing a kid's record when I was on heroin and I was going (laughs) to call it Kids Songs in the Key of H. (laughs) Um, songs Songs to sing along to for kids and extremely burnt out adults. Oh my God. And then I I went away for a little while and then I started, let's start a band and I resurrected some of those songs. And my therapist was like, you have to write some happy songs. You have to. And I was like, I don't know how to like, (laughs) and I was writing all this shit about dying and killing myself. And she was like, you have to try something else. And I was like, Oh, I really like, I like sing songs to my kids, like changing your diapy songs and like, like uh, time to get up, like and brush your teeth, like type of shit. So I was like, Oh, I'll just like record that shit. And yeah. try to make it cool. And it's turned into this really cool thing where I have a ton of people playing on it. And uh, like like Claudio from like um, Coheed's wife, Chandra, sings on it. Oh, nice. Uh, my friend Larissa, who's like a writes kids songs from Doylestown, she sings on it. Lolly Hopwood. Um, like Frank Iero from My Chemical Romance is playing on the song I wrote about my cat. You know, or no, it's about a sandwich. Um <laughs> You know, uh, I have a couple of people just like working on, I'm just like throwing it out there for people to try stuff. I, I've like hit up a lot. I've hit up people where I'm like, oh shit. Like I'm it's like two in the morning and I'm like making stuff and I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to text Cedric Bixler right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm like, Cedric, here's a song I wrote about my cat. I hope you're doing well. I love you. Take care. And then I'm like, what the fuck did I just do? <laughs> and then like he'd be like, oh man, this is cool. Like, and I'm like, oh fuck, man. What the fuck am I doing? Like, what is wrong with me? So, and then, you know, he's like nice to me about it, whatever. But like, you know, or I like, I will like be like, oh hey, Julian Baker or like Phoebe Bridgers. Like, I'll just hit you up on I'll just throw you, I'll just like drop in your DM, sending you songs about my cat. Like, just like, hey, this is a song about my cat. Want to sing on it? Like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, I'm going to fucking, I'm like a bad person uh, who shouldn't just, just do that. Like I should send it to their manager or something, or I should just not do it. Cause there's a, like, you know, uh, that's just not what you do, but like, I'm I just- would do that too. I mean, that's what I do with this podcast. And when I get a big bite, I'm like, yes, but do you, do you ever get like someone really big being like, all right, I'll do it. Uh, one time my guy that I, my friend Matt Galley, who was our booking agent at the time and putting out my record was like, I told him that I wrote a song that like, after listening to a song that Chino from the Deftones sang with the band Crosses. Yeah. And, uh, he was like, you should ask him to sing on it. And I was like, yeah, dude. But like, he won't, he was like, he might. And I was like, yeah, dude, but that's like never going to happen. He was like, I know uh, Mike, my buddy like works for whatever his management like let me just reach out and then the guy who worked for their management who was like their day-to-day guy this guy graham was like passed it on to him and then like months later i, I got an email from him being like yeah i love the song i'm gonna have the vocals to you tomorrow and i was like holy shit wow and then i had to find a studio to go record my vocals at that like what like because i just didn't have any place to go i found this guy that like in town i hit him up it was cool but then chino sent me the wrong lyrics Oh, and no. I was like, shit, did, did he intentionally hear them wrong or did he change them? Like, I, I do I, do I say nothing? What do I do here? Cause right. I wrote the part and I wrote the lyrics and I said, and, and, uh, and I was like, Hey, all good. 
if this is what you want. Um, these aren't the lyrics I sent. Like, I'm totally down to live with it. But um, I just didn't know where your head was at with it. Like, um, if if that's what you want, it's cool, too. I'm cool yeah. with it. And I just didn't know how to open it up. And he was like, oh, dude, fuck. Like, I totally was just listening and didn't even read the lyrics. I was just, like, trying to, like, listen and sing along to what I thought you were saying. And I was <laughs> like, I was like, oh, awesome like i thought they were cool and he was like i think your shit is is cool i'm just gonna sing what you what you said and i was like oh cool thank god because like this song was about like something that like i didn't want to change those parts you know but like i also want i also really wanted to work with him so it would have been worth it you know to have his input and i was ready to just accept it as his input too like but i just didn't know and i had to ask you know that would have given me an anxiety it would have eaten me away so i was just like hey um you know, I really like what you wrote. Like, uh, it isn't what I wrote, but I think it's cool. Like I'm down, totally down to keep it. Um, if that's what you want to do, you type of thing, like left it open. And, uh, he, then he sent it back with the other shit and then we sort of made it a duet and, um, it was the coolest thing. And that was like one of my, I mean, he, I still like look up to him. We even toured with them a little bit. And even to this day, like, I think I, I've run into him, like, a couple times, like, either at festivals or, like, uh, like I played with Crosses when they did a Coachella a few years ago. And I play, was playing solo one night, and then the next night they played, and I, like, came out and played with them. And, like, I don't know. It was, like, a, it's a bizarre thing to be, like, dude, I still fucking love this dude. And I remember listening to you in high school, you know, on my bus ride. Yeah. So it's, like, cool to be able to text you, you know what I mean, and ask you to sing on a song about, you know, um, going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be great working with heroes that's that's part of what i love about doing this podcast like i get to talk to all the people whose music i listened to over the years and who i looked up to and still look up to and and like just say hey thanks for doing that yeah it's pretty cool and uh, that's one of the other benefits like i've heard musicians and other people talk about like you know like the internet like now you can't just go out and play songs you have to go do this song and dance and i'm like yeah okay but here's the thing is from the get, I wanted, from the get-go, baby, all I wanted to be a part of was a community. Yeah. And I really couldn't find one. I couldn't find a time and place where the relationship I had with myself was enough where I was really able to be accepted anywhere because I couldn't really accept anything about myself. I was in turmoil constantly. Yeah. And I had some friends like Tommy and I had some people who like put up with my shit. But um, at some point you just make your own community based on what you, what you want to have around you, like what you like the most. So I think that's how circus started. Like, like your podcast, like it was like, all right, I'm going to make my own community. Like where are people at that like weird shit? And it was a time where like MySpace, Napster, all that shit was still sort of like creating this stream of musical output for people where like it was almost like you know we came from the day where you had to make flyers you guys post flyers a lot like then then we got we got birthed into a whole world where like you could just post a thing on your shit and everybody got to see it and yeah. you didn't have to go around making flyers or, or fucking you go to you know kinko's steal a kinko's card and like you know all that shit was opening up a world where it was like holy shit i don't even have to fucking make tapes i can upload this shit to a website where people just listen to the songs like like that created a new world like and then a, a sustainable world for people like us who never really cared about making money from making music that just wanted to be sustainable and that's sort of how we ha- are you know uh we definitely like take advantage of making cool art for our merch and we try to really I- indulge the community that we have of people that listen to the band to like be creative themselves and to to be active within each other in like a positive way. You know, the people who join our Patreon, we talk to and like we feel connected to them. It's not like this. It's not necessarily like, oh, yeah, here's this stuff, you know, but it is like, thanks for supporting us. Like we want to. We want to like give you more of like the stuff that we like, which is yeah. pretty a pretty a huge privilege for a, a fan base to give an artist. Like, hey, we'll trust you. Whatever road you go down with, sincerely with love in your heart, we'll follow you. Like, that's the ultimate gift you can get from a fan. So, like, we might have a smaller fan base, but in a sense, we have like more of the fan. You know? Yeah, and. Th- 
I've said this before to other members of your band and just in general, Circa fans and fans of you, Anthony, are so passionate and so loyal, unlike a lot of bands I've ever seen. And I've personally never seen another band like Circa where people sing along to every single word live. Yeah, I mean the songs. I mean, it kind of comes from a place that we're we're birthed from that that place where like you go to a hardcore show and everybody just has that. They find that thing to like they jump on top of each other to all scream the one thing that like they're all fucking feeling and they're all connecting to. You know, like that yeah. like is what has always driven me to like w- uh, find words that made me feel like I wanted to be on top of all my friends and have my friends be on, on top of me. And that, that, that feeling of like, that made me want to jump into the crowd to sing along to myself. Yeah. You know, so like, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like, like, like insecurity and like a lot of like stuff that I think is like expelled in our music that like is hard for, for like, for boys to talk about. And yeah. that's a, your man growing up and talking about being able to express myself in a way that was like both like, like as aggressive as I possibly could like allow myself to be, but also like, like completely in tune with everything that was like a vulnerable and fragile within me. Like it became like a superpower, yeah, you know, and whatever anybody said I was good at or not, like I could distract myself with, but like I felt so high from being able to to enter into that state of mind that flow state to make music and i knew that when i got there the little things would happen you know you'd find us a word or a phrase or a melody here and there that tickled you the same way a bjork song tickled you and you knew when you found it because it tickled you that same way and you just did that again you know it was very simple it's so simple you know and if you do that without judgment or fear that like you're ridiculous because you are (laughs) <laughs> and you can be ridiculous and not worry about it because it doesn't fucking matter because you're also probably going to fucking die of some horrible, horrible thing someday. And the worst thing that you're going to be able to look back on and say is like, I was ridiculous once in a while, you know, and the best you're going to have made something like really unique, you know, and uh, even if one other person is like, fuck, that's cool. Like there's a connection right there that is that's greater than than most of the things that we we share, you know? Yeah. And I'm with you on that. And so much of my life, I was just people pleasing or trying to suck up to people who wanted nothing to do with me or being somebody else. I don't know, because it's what I felt like I had to be. And I'm finally getting to a place where I'm doing what I want to do. And what other people say doesn't really fucking matter. Like in terms of this podcast, Tommy and I have said it on the show, like, we love this thing so much. If someone ever had something bad to say about it, I would be like, I really don't give a yeah. shit because I'm yeah. so happy with what we're doing. Like, it doesn't matter to me. That's the thing. It's like when you're in that mode of flow state, like the, it doesn't really matter because you're like, you're conditioning yourself to like, to be authentic, you know? And when you're like, you can't really, it's hard to cut that down, you know? Like somebody can criticize you for something that you gave your best at and you're like, yeah, totally. I agree. It could have been like better like this. You know what I mean? Like when you're truly connected to something like you have that, you have that, um, that forgivability with it, you know, like that's, I think truly how like athletes get really good, like shooting foul shots and like, like hitting fucking like hitting points and shit because they just truly get so fluid at it. It's like jazz, you know, like they're just like, they know it, you know, and they take the chance and you watch them perform and you're like, man, that's so good. Like, how do you do that? But it's like, it takes all this practice, you know, like that's where, that's where I lucked out is I, I love the practice, you know, like, uh, I, 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 I got to experience a lot of different things and my, by far like going on stage, having people like you, having like somebody think that you're something that you're not like all that shit, (laughs) very, very dangerous illusion. Yeah. And, uh, I don't, I don't, um, you know, I don't drink from this. I don't, I don't fucking, I don't drink where I shit. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like that makes sense. Yes. Um, and I, I, and I don't like it to me, like as soon as an artist starts like eating their own shit in a sense, like you're just, they just get fucked up. And so like, I, I get to just focus on making shit that I like, 
my goal isn't to like make a ton of money or to like be big and famous or anything. Like my goal is to just be able to continue, continue making music. And honestly, just realizing it from all this pandemic shit, I can fucking work full time at McDonald's and still make shit that gives me the high that I need. You know, I can wait 10 years for live music to come back. It means that much to me. I don't yes. care. I could say goodbye to it forever if I have to. Like, I don't care. I pay no, I pay, I, I do no justice to the muse and to the spirit of, of music and rhythm and, and all that shit that drives it that's beyond, you know, words that transcends. I don't, I do it no justice by complaining about whatever is happening in the world. People are dying. Yeah. You know, so like, oh, I can't play my concert and make my money. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what I can do is do podcasts. I can write songs. I can put songs out like that. I can write a fucking song about thinking Santa Claus is a creep, have it out in a fucking week. You know what I mean? And that's a beautiful thing. That's a miracle. You know what I mean? And I'm around for that miracle. And I, I'm going to focus on that because uh, the uh, other options are, are, are just don't seem as pleasant. So let's talk about audience of one. Now I've got Anthony here. I've got Tommy here. What do you think? Now, let's say live music comes back one day. What do you think about re-recording that four-song EP, putting it out, and playing a couple gigs? Here's what I think. I think that we put the four-song EP as, out as is. Yes. I maybe do an extra track, like the track that's instrumental. I maybe see what it would be like to put some vocals to it. Yes. Or not. And then I say we just write new songs. Yeah. And put out a new EP. Even and better. Maybe put out EPs once in a while. And, you know, I don't really like thinking about when music's going to come back. I like just thinking about what we can do in the meantime. You know what I'm saying? And in the meantime, we can write songs, you know? And uh, I think that, like, JD is busy as fuck. I haven't talked to him in a long time, but every time I've talked to him, we've connected like soul brothers. Yeah. And I think that he would love to make music. And I think if he had the time and the ability, to send us a beat that I know that Tommy could put some, I know that Tommy could take one fucking like two hour stretch a week, sit down, shit out something that was cool. Yeah. And I could send something and, and put something over and we can just do some shit and it would be fun as shit. I, what do you think about that, Tommy? Oh, I'd be totally down. I mean, my thing is, I is think like, you need it. I think you need it, Tom. I, I always like, I still play guitar like at home, but I, you know, I'm always just been like a casual player. Like I've never taken it really seriously. Like I don't know any theory. I, don't know I, any I mean, that's really what I'm talking about, man. Like I'm not talking about any pressure. Like, no, like we don't even have to ever put anything out. Like it's just be, it would be a fun experiment. Like, okay. Like the three of us like do like, why not? You know what I mean? Like we're literally in the end times. <laughs> so it's like, and, and, and like, I think that like, time and space being challenged by the fact that we have the ability to just send each other tracks now yeah. is like provides this, uh, you know, uh, provides this like a plane of no excuses here. Audience of one reunion, 2021, baby, 2020 audience of one, baby. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Let's bring it back, dude. Let's do a four song. EP. Let's release the other EP. Let's put it together and make like a fucking record. We'll get Keith Buckley to put it out or whatever. What's his name? Pete Buckley. Pete Buckley. Keith Buckley's from Every Time I Die. I love yeah. that guy. Um, another guy who I like got a chance to know from being in a band where I was like, I love you. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, why do you always wear such a cool hat? Anyway, I, used to, I just remember that was the first thing I thought about. Um, Keith from Every Time I Die, I was like, man, I've never seen anybody wear a hat like that and look so fucking sexy. Right? He's got great hair. He's got really good hair, but back in the day, he wore this like weird hat that just was like so fucking weird, man. It was so weird. <laughs> oh, it, was like, it was like a Jeff hat, but it was like big. And ugh, I just remember being like, you're crazy. He had bell bottoms on. He had yeah. boots. He was the, and he, ugh, everything about him. I wanted to be, he was like Tyler Durden. <laughs> but anyways, so I want to offer my uh, professional services if if we need to push this reunion along. I'm I'm embroiled in this day forward reunion talk all the time, trying to push right. those guys to do Dude, it. First of all, okay, I cut you in. You could be audience one's manager. How about that? <laughs> all right, I'm ready. Right, but my manager Tim has to be involved too because I literally can't do anything without him because I am fucking not a smart man. 
that's perfect. I think Anthony, you're always you've always been super smart. You're terribly disorganized. <laughs> I'm I'm wonderfully disorganized. You're, I remember one time we were in the car and he was like, I had to get something out of my backpack. You know, like when you look in like a little kid's backpack that like all the papers that should have been in a folder are just like crushed down at the bottom. Works for me. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. That's, uh, here's here's my issue. Is it like a lot of people are like, oh, I just can't get anything done unless I'm like organized. I have to get everything. In. It's like this is that's this is interesting because that's not how I work. You've never. Like, I almost feel better in an environment like, OK, so right now I have like so much shit everywhere. Like I have my little guitar boat. I have a monitor system. That's basically a Vox guitar amp that has like a plug that goes into my inbox that but like, I'll take out my headphones and then take that in to listen back. Cause I don't have proper speakers cause I sold them when I was on heroin. <laughs> and um, I have like 16 kids keyboards like all around me. My desk is a mess. There's like ashes from like uh incense. I have like a, a, a fucking, a, a, a crystal, that Meredith has from upstairs that one of the boys brought down a microphone, a fucking a couple Le- a Lego, some Lego hair. That's just like <laughs> Jack brought down a couple pieces of Lego hair that are just sitting here for some reason, a couple capo. It's so messy. The floor is messy. There's wires everywhere. I know how to plug things out. I'm like, but uh, you know, I like that. That's how I work. Like, and some people don't work like that. And I, I work. I think those people might be better than me in a lot of ways, but like this works for me. Like I got a lot done today. I wrote two, I wrote three new ideas today, crazy parts, two songs that didn't even have fucking a key to them. They were just beats. And I'm like, that and that. And I'm just like making shit up and just trying and just like, you know, not look at worrying about being, knowing I'm dumb, knowing I'm dumb, knowing it doesn't matter. And they also being fully committed and connected to it at the same time. Like it's a delicate, it's like surfing and, and the reality of, of, of nothingness, you know? Well, I'm super organized. That's kind of my career. So I can, I can handle shit. We'll get this done. Yeah. That's how, this is how our powers combine. We make things happen. So you can manage audience of one. And then we need to talk about how the fuck we're going to get this day forward back together because i've been trying to put it together for a little bit behind the scenes too and i think the money that it would take and the time that it would take would almost just like couldn't happen yeah you know because it and also what, what's been discussed is colin hasn't played drums in a while like that so he would have to invest a lot of time into it would take him two months of practicing like it's a part-time thing and yeah. he would be better again instantly. I guarantee it. I, I would. I would. He would. He could drink lion's mane and ceremonial grade matcha every day. It would make him limitless. Some chaga, <laughs> some maca, some ceremonial grade matcha, some maybe a little ginseng, a kombucha. We'll get him all fucking limitless. We'll get him on the fucking Myers cocktail. He'll be fucking, and he'll be learning shit like motherfucker. I know he does that. I know he's very smart. Yeah, uh, we need to find a, a festival that'll give them like seventy or eighty G's, so they can all, so that he can be like, "Fuck yeah, I'll take fucking," you know, so they can all make a little bit of bank, and so they can all be like, "Yeah, we'll devote a bunch of time to fucking getting tight," because I think that they would need to do like, I think that they could do like a, a Philly show. I think they could do like a f- couple festival shows for sure. And like, let's say we get a festival show that's like in LA or like, we could also book like a couple little shows around it type of thing. Like we yeah. just do little things like that where it's like, okay, we find somebody that will invest in, in like helping them get the money. Like, you know, th- I don't know, dude. I don't know. Like, what if we could get, we would just, I think you, you could do a solo opening gig or we could throw Seos in on one nah, of the shows. Nah, I just want to be, I just want to watch unless they need me to be a keyboard player. And then I'll be the back and I'll play with Colin and I'll stare at Colin the whole time. And I'll keep my mouth open while I play keys and I'll shake my fucking head back and forth and I'll hump the keyboard and I'll fucking go crazy. This is the shit I fantasize about. I was thinking about like, Oh, if this day four does a reunion, I'm going to have to do a whole thing where I film it and it's like a professional. And then I was like, wait, no, if this day forward plays, I'm fucking going off. Yeah. I'm not stuck yeah. on stage, like filming I'm jumping off the monitors. Like I, I, I just yeah. want to celebrate. Yeah. I want to be in the pit. Yeah. So we're going to make that happen. 
We're going to make a, an audience of one revival happen. And then you'll have an, another project on your plate. That, Anthony. that would be so funny if audience of one opened for <laughs> this day forward. Dude. If we got like, as if we just got like a bunch of fucking like bands, like yeah. that knew each other from back in the day to do a show, you know, that like people that were like, uh, you know, here's 20 like, dudes. Do from Bucks County. That's what the festival's called. <laughs> We'll get like vacationer to play. Dude. No, or this is like, like starting this, line to play or something. This is a really good idea. Northeast scene festival. Cause I think, yeah, you could do it. Cause I think starting line could play. Yeah. You know, here's what we could do. Okay. I, I, I know a person who knows a person that knows a guy who knows a gal that knows somebody who books shows yes and does it as a job and also like makes money from it somehow probably isn't right now <laughs> to be totally honest but i will look and and has talked to this person and this gal whisper down the lane style fucking really grapevine about wanting to do festivals and maybe if we find some cool shit we could put some shit together do a festival and find some fucking reason to get this day forward to do it. You know what I mean? That's a great idea. And you know, even if that doesn't become the thing, we can just like, let's just like spitball and throw the idea around. Like I, 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 you know, I know there's like promoters out there that fucking love that band and would like see the value and being like, okay, like I want to do a, I know I can make money off of a show. If I do like one big show with them and like maybe, take a like you know and just get them to play oh god it would just be such a dream dude i actually want to cover um i was like so i like for the circa patreon we like always get in this like argument uh like every month we're like not argument i wouldn't say that it's not an argument but it's always like this fucking shit fuck of like what song we're gonna cover where it's like it's basically me being like um hey uh like, let's do all these. There's like a bunch of songs I want to cover. And then like somebody being like another song, another song. And then like me being like, oh, here's another one. And like, we just have to figure it out. Like, it's hard to make decisions sometimes when you have a bunch of people who are crazy. And um, I wanted to do like, uh, like Fragile Version or like White Picket Defense System or like yeah. the Abbreviated World or like any, honestly, like half of the songs off that record. Yeah. Do. There are even songs off like Transient Effects that I would have been like, Dude, like if I like I would totally have fucking covered if I wore a mask, like and done a weird version of it for because that was like on the one of the first Sif Ward songs I ever heard. And it's like perfect for like right now. I'm like, dude, let's cover it for the Patreon, you know? Can I ask you to really put your foot down and make that happen? I'll do my best. All right, because I, I, I the I, reunion I, or us covering it. You covering it. Yeah, but how how amazing would it be if um, we start how well, this is what we got to do. Okay. Yes. I want to try to do that. I yeah. would love to try to, I want to, I want Mike to start singing again and start making music again. There's literally no reason why he can't. Exactly. I have a hundred people that will send him drum beats to just sing on. And then we'll take the things he sings on and we'll fucking play over it. And we'll make some jazz with it. And it'll be fucking the best shit. Anybody It will be better than the craziest shit. Anybody who like is trying to be cool ever makes. And because Mike Shaw is a goddamn fucking spiritual fuck it. He's a goddamn, he's a goddamn light in the darkness of this world. Yes, he is. One of my favorite singers of all time. I said that to somebody, I send that to, to somebody who, and I'm not going to throw them under the bus for it. But they were, they were like, no, you're kidding me. And I was like, yeah, dude, he's like, honestly, in my top fucking five, six favorite singers of all time. Yeah. And they're like, Mike Shaw. And I was like, yes. Like, think about it, dude. This guy, if you knew him, you would understand the, the fucking, the, the, the actual piece of art, living art that is Mike Shaw as a human being. Exactly. Most gentle soul I ever met in my life would expose the inner demons in any person. Like literally I could, everything he wrote, everything he expressed, the way he sang it, the way he screamed it, his timing, everything was so precise. And he had this monster that came out of him on stage, yes. but it was juxtaposed with this person in real life who let me stay at his house when my parents would kick me out. And, uh, you know, like didn't get mad at me 
when I like had sex with his friend's girlfriend. You know what I mean? And uh, like it understood, you know, and and was like would lend me his records anytime, no matter what, and was never cursed and was just always smiling. And no matter what happened was just like loving and I never met another person like Mike. I never I, I, I there's literally just he's a special type of human being. It's my actual dream to make music with him. And I think we could have fun together. For sure. So Shaw is like, dude, Mike is like the most humble Zen person. And like, I think Anthony hit the nail on the head. It's like when you know him personally and then what you see, what he does on stage, you're like, this is literally, this is pure. Like what he's doing right now is a, completely genuine and profound act like this isn't it's not contrived it's not like a it's not showy it's this is legitimate when people talk about like the emotive part of hardcore like the things that mike was the embodiment of that because he was this n calm person and then you would see him on stage and you were like in this world, dude, where it was like to be a man was like to be tough and beat people up and like be, you know, whatever. Like Mike came out of the blue with like actually to be a man meant to be like compassionate, mm-hmm. meant to be like, you know, loose and meant to be loving and open. And 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 like he literally was somebody I wanted to be more like at every, you know, I don't think he ever was deceitful about anything. No, I don't think it was ever in his nature. I've never, it is my relationship with him has never experienced. He's ever get close to anything like that. Even hiding is he, he's just so beautiful. He is and, and one of a kind. It, everything about him needs to be celebrated. And I just think that, you know, uh, it's, I, and, and I've heard his podcast is very cool and I, I love it. Um, Kinder things folks, check it out. Yeah. And uh, you know, I've always, I, you know, I should, maybe I should reach out to him. The same thing where I'm like, I'm sitting there being like, man, I ho- I wish he would yes me to be on there, but maybe I should just be like, butt in line and just, butt there, but my, but my way in there and just be like, yo, bro. Like that's what I did to Tommy. I was like, Dude, when the fuck are you gonna ask me to mirror your podcast? <laughs> we were chatting one day about like stuff, and I was like, "Man, it's so cool how like you know some people, you know who you don't like, you don't talk to for a little while, but any every time you do, you're like fucking on the same page with them." Yes, you know, <clears throat> and it's like real love, you know, um, where you're just accepting, you know, um, and you know somebody is accepting of you, and it's like you know, it's beautiful. It really is, and I just want to throw. I want to throw a pipe dream cover out there for Circa Patreon. Mm-hmm. All right. Juice World, Wishing Well. Okay. I, I've never heard a song so accurately capture the struggles of addiction, and I almost cry every time I listen to it. All right, listen. I'm going to find it right now. Yeah. It's, it's a, it really is like I, I have – I was on the fence about a lot of the things that Keith sent me there for a little while. And it was like he would be like, "Here, check this out." I was like, "Listen to it." I was like, what is this? I know a lot. I know a, a lot of people who have worked with with Juice, and like I, you know, I've listen, I've you listened could totally to do I've it. listened. I've listened to some shit he's done, and I always thought it was was really cool and, and mellow. See, this is like right up your alley. Dude, I can make this. I can make this all fucking blues. Exactly. All right. Tell you what, I'm gonna fuck with this later. Yeah, <laughs> this is on my list. That I've learned to my whole life. I have uh, been too afraid to advocate for myself or ask for anything, and I always expected people to just knock on my door and hand me things. And uh, now I do the opposite, and I I speak out when I want something to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to uh, to sit with things like that. Yeah. Because like, there's some shit I just never would have done unless I had that mentality. So it's like, yeah, fuck it. Exactly. So we're winding down now. Now listen, here here's something I want to say. Now, Anthony, first of all, I'm glad that you're on the show. I wanted to ask you a lot earlier, but like I mentioned. I, I was just afraid of bothering you because I figured people were always bothering you for stuff, but it sounds like that's not the case. Nope. I got no friends. No one bothers me. <laughs> I hang out with kids all day, make music all day, 
Sometimes I go jumping in some ice. And second, your story was one that we really wanted to tell on the show because we all grew up together and you've done so much in music. And, you know, before I got clean. Crazy. Dude, my story is so boring. Like all the rumors about me are way more interesting than my actual story. It's like a fucking bum out. Yeah, there is a lot of rumors out there, but... But uh, also, I want to say, you know, before I got clean, when the census was coming out and you were doing that press cycle, like I read that you got clean, you were struggling yeah. again, and you got clean. And for the first time, I thought, maybe I could too, because I didn't know anyone who got down like I did. I, it's yeah. something I pretty much did by myself. Yeah. And you I do. Knew- it's, it's hard to, because you know, once you start doing it, you really can't turn to your book, your partner and be like, Hey, uh, I've been getting heroin a whole bunch. You know what I mean? Or like, yeah. doesn't really know. It just, pe- people don't really respond to it. Yeah. And uh, I saw, I knew you and I saw that you stopped and I was like, huh, maybe I can too. And then, you know, a couple years later it ended up happening. So it takes, that's the type of path that like, that's the thing is like, people also don't have patience with themselves. Cause it's not something that happens at once. Like not at my, all. my, you know, relapse happened before it even happened. And then even now, like, it's just like, it's weird. Like, again, like there's no bad drug. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong. You know, if you want to have a life where you're doing heroin or doing whatever that shit is, and you, you have that, you know, like, um, I'm not trying to, I don't, I'm not, that's a thing, you know what I mean? And that's, that's a, I can't, man, the things I want to do while I'm here in this short period of time are like make music, help people be a good dad. Those three things, very manageable, very attainable, and uh, make music I like, help people be a good dad. Those are my main focuses. And I can't do any of those things Matt, trying to maintain an opiate habit because it's just too much to handle. And um, tr- if I could, I would, you know? And what I need, I need to whittle down everything in my life so that I can keep those things as my three main focuses. Everything sort of leads back to those roads and er- anything that doesn't, you know, I can fucking lose. Well, you've made a lot of music over the years that's helped me. I remember the first time I heard the first Circa record, I didn't really understand it. And then I got really high and listened to it again. And I was like, oh, This makes sense. I remember that. I remember really struggling with a breakup and listening to uh, All Your Friends Are Gone. I remember Mm -hmm. uh, getting out of detox and listening to that Seosin record and Second Guesses. I remember being all fucked up on heroin and listening to Nesting Dolls and being sad. I, Dude, I wrote that song on heroin. I knew it. (laughs) I knew it. I actually wrote that song on a blackout. So the band was sending out songs, and at the time I was like, I don't want to play with music in the room with you guys anymore. Yeah. I'm at home. I want you to send stuff to me and I'll put vocal ideas on my computer and we'll just take that shit into the fucking studio. I don't want to write with you guys anymore. I ho- I couldn't handle being in the room with anybody. Yeah. The, the vibe was so toxic at the time, in my opinion. And it was probably all my fault. So I'm just saying like that is a precursor, but um, <clears throat> I was in such a toxic place and th- I, they were sending stuff and I wasn't doing anything. Cause I was just like, trying to get dope all the time and hide it and um and in the suburbs and ugh, it was like awful and i uh, it was just anyways so i remember them sending sign i had i remember getting like a fucking bundle and it might have been the first time i ever bought a bundle and it was fucking nightmare but i got it and um and i think i was like all right cool i, I have i have like you know, a month's worth of heroin. So I'm going to fucking chill here and make this song. And I think I woke up the next day with like most of the bundle gone. And the song was, was recorded over us. The last thing they sent. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this just to show that I'm working. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a jealous, jealous spirit. Yes, the, the 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 heroin, the opiates. It's a je- jealous spirit. She takes way too much and gives. Um, you know, ultimately the pleasure that you get from it just wanes over time. And uh, you know, this is way more sustainable. I I think that making music, having good connections with people, helping people, you know, having good mind, body, spirit connection, like uh, trying to strive for autonomy, like those things are manageable. You know, do I want to fucking jump off a roof sometimes for sure? Yeah. You know, do I have the mental capacity and the tools to work through that, to know that that's just like 
going to be part of the the miracle is getting to that point and then enduring. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can do that for now. Maybe one day, I don't know what tomorrow brings, but I know you're trying to go weeks at a time, you know, two, <laughs> three hours ago, you were like, all right, uh, well, how's your week? I'm like, Whoa, I don't even know. Can't even comprehend that. It's too much. Too <laughs> we got to take it one day at a time, right? One minute at a time right now, dude. We just got three hours. We just got three hours together. I, I don't know. I at least that. I was, I, at least I wasn't smoking crack and heroin together at this very moment. That's a step in the right direction. God help my children. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I just want to say thanks because shit, I know we haven't had a long conversation like this in a long time, but your music has really helped me through the years. It's like we've been together. Hey, listen, man, I appreciate you as a human being. And uh, that, you saying that, you know, makes me feel good because sometimes I, I, I think I, in my back of my mind, I always felt like you hated me. But I think I also project that onto literally everybody because I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> I do that too. So uh, I appreciate this. This is cool. I've always thought you were a really good person. You've always been like friends with everybody that I thought was really cool. And I always wanted to be friends with you. So happy to be friends with you. It's on now, and Tommy and I have been talking more recently, and it's really, um, it's really been like a like a blessing occurring in my life, you know, from the dark, our dark Lord Satan, and uh, the dark Lord of Satan, multi head, um, you know, uh, head of Ithra, um, has brought us together in uh, ritual contrition to make music <laughs> to celebrate friendship. To celebrate the shadow and the light, I just I love that. I just appreciate this. Is like there was a time when uh, it, Anthony and I were younger, and Anthony, you were in your first year in college, and I think I was in my second year, and you came up to visit me at school. Do you remember that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony came up to visit me at school, and uh, we were supposed to go out to this big party, and literally. It it just devolved into us just getting high in my dorm room and sitting there and just talking for hours and hours and hours. And oh my god, it was like the best weekend of my life because I was still in high school. I think you know what you, you end up in your senior year at at LaSalle, and then it was my my freshman year. Your freshman year, and I like stayed in your dorm room all weekend, and we partied and got so fucked up. Uh, that was a like a, one of those times where do you remember? We would, we did go out a couple times, and I remember we went out one where one place, and yeah, I think I know what you're going to talk about. Oh no, do you mean to not bring it up? <laughs> yeah, you said whatever. I don't fuck. I don't even know who I was. Back then. We go out in one place, and I I lose track of Anthony for the better part of maybe ten minutes, and I was like, all right, uh, we're gonna peace out. And this is like ten minutes later, he comes up to me, and he's like, yo, uh, uh, this girl's gonna come back with us, and I was like. How, what, what? <laughs> 10 minutes? I left you alone for 10 minutes and you have a girlfriend? He's like, dude, these girls. She ended up coming home with us, not only to my dorm room, she came to visit Anthony like a week later. <laughs> he came to visit me a week later. We hung out a couple times. I like, and I was like, holy shit. I was like, I, I, what happened? And it was this funniest thing was like when we were like partying, like, like Anthony said before, when we get together, it's like nothing changed. It's instantaneous. Yeah. Let's make fun of everything. Let's make each other laugh. Let's talk about deep and serious shit. And then let's yeah. go back. To it's it's literally, it's when you see like the, the oil bubbles reconnect, yeah. like from when they get shaked up and then they come back to the same form. Like it's, that's me and Tommy, like life will shake us up. We come back to the same form. We have the same sense of humor. We're dealing with the same trauma like that we've been dealing with together. Like we're also like celebrating the same shit, you know, like we're, we kind of have similar shit going on with fatherhood and life and whatever. Like, you know, I think people tend, it's weird when you're in a band and people tend to qualify you in a different way where you're like, yeah, they, Jesus, I have a just a normal job like everybody else that is like, I, I love it. You know, I'm like, but I'm just like every, um, you know, fucking banker that loves being a banker i don't know what jobs are baker that loves being a baker i don't know why i'm picking b things like a builder that loves being a builder or a beat bonder or you know a bail bondsman or whatever b thing a band boy <laughs> and we were talking you know and i've listened to a couple episodes of the podcast and they're really cool and uh you know 
and I just like, you know, I like being a part of celebrating music in any way, you know? And, um, I, I, I like the fact that, you know, we got to dissolve that idea that like, you know, people are bothering me because tell you what, people don't fuck with my shit. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe everybody's just like, Oh, maybe, maybe that'll other than think like, you know, maybe other than think rather than thinking that I'm just like this pariah that nobody likes, I'll just pretend that everybody thinks I'm just like mega busy hanging out with like fucking Shania Twain and like fucking, you know, uh, whomever, like famous pop star singers. Wouldn't know? it be funny if you got like an influx of requests now to do songs and all this other shit? I won't. <laughs> oh, from the pod, from this podcast? <laughs> no, we reach millions. Oh, from people here. Yeah, from people being like, hey, I heard Anthony is really not busy. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what I'm doing. You know what I've been doing on top of just starting a band with like everybody that like wants to has time. Like I'll put an hour together. I'll sing over something and send it back. See if you like it. Like I can do it. Whatever. Um, this like a person from Trinidad like covered one of my songs and posted a video of it. So I was like, hey, let's cover a song together. And we covered a Rufus Wainwright song together. Oh, that's sick. And the other day that like somebody else was like, hey, let's cover. I want you to cover a song, this song. And I was like, mm. I checked it out. And I was like, this is not a song that I, like, I'm going to cover because I just don't feel it. Yeah. They're like, what's a song that you would want to cover? And I was like, I don't know. They're like, do you like Elliot Smith? And I was like, I love Elliot Smith. And then so they were like, yeah, you should, you should cover this song. I'll pay you. And I was like, how about I just cover it? <laughs> And you don't have to fucking pay me. And I just like cover it because I love Elliot Smith. And this, I could be fun for me to learn the song. And you could just take the money that you're going to pay me and you can go fucking give it somebody who fucking needs it if you got money, the sandwich money on the side. You know what I mean? Because I already get fucking paid to sing sometimes. So it's like, <laughs> and there it is. I, I learned a new song. I feel good. Well, this is it, guys. Anthony, I want to say thank you one last time. And Tommy. Anthony, thank you for being an awesome friend and on top of that i <laughs> thank you for his life. <laughs> thank you for thank you for making music that really does it 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 does touch people in a way that very few artists nowadays really do a lot of things are so surface and very basic and you and this is this is just speaks volumes for the like the kind of person you are and the kind of bands that you form is that I've never seen a band like Circa where the fans are so dedicated and it's not their dedication to just the music. It's the, it's the ethos you guys have. It's the, the mentality that you guys espouse and it's the, the lifestyles you lead that, that people want to emulate. And it's really nice to see that in that, like, uh, especially with like Circa, I've never seen a band that more people have a tattoo. Like the safe camp tattoo. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Like I, I see people all the time with it. Do you remember that one guy who <laughs> all this whole podcast is just me and Tommy be like, you remember? <laughs> uh, you remember? Uh, so do you remember that one guy who had like the screechy weasel tattoo on his leg? Oh, yeah. Like Raj. Yeah. He like worked at the auto body shop and he would buy us like Winston's <laughs> and uh, he, I just remember being like, he got a fucking screeching weasel tattoo. Yeah. Like what is wrong with you, dude? Like, I just remember thinking like, dude, I want a tattoo too, but like, why would you ever get a band tattoo? And nowadays, like the pe people are like, make a big deal out of this. Like people, like the circus stuff is cause of Esau, honestly. And the safe camp is a cool thing. Like that's not me. Yeah. That's like, that's like people wanting people made that yeah. the people who listen to circa and not just circa the other stuff that's related to it. Like they made that. They feel so connected to the music. You know, when we wanted to make music, we were like, Hey, we want to, we want to talk about stuff. That's like fucking that, that is like, the same way that like Tom Waits makes us feel or like, you know, William Barrows makes us feel or like James Baldwin or just like people like we want to fucking make these feelings happen in music. And that there's a lot of people that that resonate with those types of feelings that like just can't communicate them, you know, and we have this way of doing it. So in a way, it's like our it's like our duty to do that with with the ability to, you know, uh, communicate in that way. So I feel very blessed to be able to do that. And like, it gives me a, a purpose for being on this earth for uh, otherwise, like, no matter what, I just don't even, I have to struggle sometimes to find it. And, uh, you know, so I, I'm very grateful for you, Tommy, as a friend and Keith as a new friend. And this is a good, I, I, here's what I'm, this is what I'm proposing as to close this out. We make this a part one. We make it a to be continued series. 
where we we can because Tommy and I got some shit we got to talk about. Too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The, you're just now we we did the origin story. We got that out of the way. So the next time you come back, we're we're just going to hit record and we're already going to be talking. It's just going to go. Exactly. We'll do, it's like, you know, the tapes where fucking Trump got caught saying that he like, yeah, I know about the virus. I know it's terrible, but I played it down because that's what I fucking do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's what I'm going to, we're going to be like that interview guy where like, we're just going to, we're going to do this like every three, we're going to do three hour interviews every like, every couple months, whenever you guys have an opening or need somebody and. Dude, I got fucking live streams. I'm trying to plan. I'm trying to fucking make bands with fucking my I, mailman. I've been trying, <laughs> I've been trying to join uh, the live streams when I see them come up on my phone. I try to join them, and uh, I, I <laughs> sometimes it's just Jack eating. Well, it's funny. Is one was uh, it, it was you playing like you had like a MPC or like a little keyboard in front of me. And you were just kind of like making beats, and <laughs> I wrote something in the chat, and I was like. This asshole owes me a half a pack of Benson and Hedges. He stole it from me in high school. <laughs> and literally, a bunch of people like came at like a bunch of people in the chat were like, "Hey, how do don't say stuff like that?" Blah blah. blah. And I was like, "But he did." Like, <laughs> was, and then Keith told me he goes, "Yeah, I went on one of the live things, and he, he was like, Anthony goes, let me cover a song, <laughs> and and Keith goes, hate breed, Tommy. I yeah. like that you're going on there and causing trouble too." I love that. That's my favorite thing about it is like, you know, it's like my favorite thing about it. Like, it's weird because it, it, for a long time I'd play like these solo shows, you know, and there'd be like a couple people there. And like, sometimes if people were like talking, I remember having this like existential like crisis about who I was being like, they don't give a fuck about me. Yeah. They paid a ticket. I'm getting their money, but they have my fucking soul. Yeah. And I'm fucking bummed because I just want them to want to listen to me. And I'm like, I'm like such a fucking dummy in that way and i like made me have to work on that like i like i don't want to give a shit but then we're playing these shows on the internet where i'm literally i have to not only do i see a reflection of myself which i can't really play when i'm playing a show acoustic show on a fucking stool i'm watching people and they're watching me and i'm watching them like they're on they're the ones putting on a show not me they don't even realize it they're in the hot seat like I'm watching all of them. I'm I'm like I'm loving Pichu. I people watch like motherfucker. <laughs> and I get into the zone. I practice so much sometimes before a show that like I get into the zone. I start going on my thing, and I'm just watching people. I'm guessing what their life is like. I'm guessing like what it looks like. I uh, never mind. <laughs> but I'm just like watching people. Like and I'm just like you know living in my mind and like like being in flow state and uh. You know, I can't do that on the computer. I like see myself in a weird reflection. I try to avoid it. But then I also see what people are saying during the song. This is great. I can't hear it that well. My computer's staticky. Hey, Josie. Oh, what's up? And it's like the whole thing. I'm like, and I'm reading it and I'm trying to be in the moment, but I'm also like, do I look good? I look dumb. Do I look dumb? I sound dumb. Did I hit that note? I fucking flat as shit. What the fuck? Oh my God, I just fucked that up. I fucked that up. And it's like, you know, uh, there's a rush to it still, you know, um, it's a different type of rush and it's, it takes a different type of process and a mind, different mind frame, you know, maybe, um, I just, I had it so good for so long. I got to go out and play music in a hundred different bands, a hundred different feelings. And I really, I love it so much. I'm willing to wait a hundred years for it, you know, and I'm willing to die with what I got to do with it under my belt, celebrating it still every day, paying homage to it, talking about it, writing songs, sharing songs, being fucking weirdos, talking about, you know, stuff that, uh, talk, you know, just whatever, man. You know, like, I'm not trying to like qualify who I am or what I do, but I know it's not like, you know, uh, palatable for everybody that likes music, you know, but for people that are seriously emotionally disturbed like me, uh, they and can't talk about it as much. They that don't write songs. There we go. We have our own little thing, you know. And I'm lucky for that, you know. If it wasn't for that, I'd have nothing, you know. Except for these beautiful kids. There you have it, folks. Anthony Green. Now that was wild, Tommy. When we were when we were arranging this thing, you told me he said he had a lot to say, so we better make it a two parter. And I didn't think it was actually going to happen, but it did. <laughs> no, well, I knew it as soon as I started texting with him. He would like he texted me a couple times and was just like, "Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really excited. 
I'm really excited. And after like the fourth time, he was like, I can't wait to get on and talk. I was like, this isn't going to be an issue. Like, and there was a couple (laughs) times where you asked a single question and Anthony talked for 15 minutes, you know, it was so awesome because, you know, sometimes we have to really work like asking questions and getting people to talk, getting them comfortable. But Anthony did all the work for us. He yeah. took us on an insane ride, and we just had to sit back and enjoy it. I was going to say, Anthony did the heavy lifting. As yeah. <laughs> we just kind of set it up. We're like, yeah, so talk about uh, Say Ocean. And 45 minutes later, talk about Circus Survive. And half an hour later, like it was just, it just flew. And he's just so f- He's so entertaining. Like he's just yeah. everything about like every time he tells his story, the way he talks, like he he just has my full attention the whole time. It's so funny. Yes. Like even editing this thing, I was like, I'm barely taking anything out. I mean, it's just I was I was hanging on every word. Oh, he actually said that right after it. He goes, Yo, except for that one thing that I literally said right after I said it, please take that out. He goes, You can keep everything else. He goes, I don't don't send me a screen or copy. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> he was like immediately like I don't, I don't fucking care he's like he and i was like dude are you sure and he was like look i said what i said <laughs> i wonder if he talks like this on other podcasts because he told some pretty wild stories i don't know like that would be a great kind of thing i i i'm sure depending on his mood i'm yeah. sure he he anthony's just a great storyteller yeah so like when he gets in that mode of like i'm gonna tell a story um, if he's, you know, properly motivated, I'm pretty sure he's good to go. But I think one of the other things that like, and you know, Vadim texted us today and was like, I love these episodes where it's our old friends, where yes. it's us talking about the things we grew up with, because I feel like there's some times where we get kind of bogged down in the day to day of what our lives are like now. Yes. And we forget that we were once part of something that was really fun and special and, you know, that's why we do this. Like we, we sit down and talk about these things because it was such a, you know, people talk about nostalgia and like looking back on the, you know, the past with rose colored glasses. And it's like, it's not like I, I legitimately look at those times and I, I, I always think of them now, granted there's some shitty stuff that happened, but I always look at them fondly, or at least I can, I can gather one part of something, even the worst stories some of the, you know, the most tragic things that happened and I can gather something out of it that I'm like, I'm glad that happened. It almost doesn't feel real sometimes. Like there's no footage of audience of one. I see the pictures and I'm like, that was the thing. I still uh, am kind of reeling over the fact that like, it just dawned on me, like when I was in the middle of saying it, I'm like, yeah, well, you have to look at JD while you're playing. And Anthony goes immediately. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you, that's what every picture of you when we're playing with audience one, your back is to the crowd and you are staring at JD. <laughs> and it's right because I mean, that was the way I had to play with him. He's just such a good, he's such a good drummer. You really have to, you have to keep an eye on him because he throws things out there and you kind of have to be ready for it. He also is one of those people that's real big on his, I follow his head motions because, you know, a lot of times drum and bass are so kind of inextricably linked like they should be yeah they really they they need to follow each other so if you're good they should be plus it's a three-piece band you got to be fucking on point yeah like there's no you there's no room for error right that's why that show at the kill time went so poorly is because anthony played and sang without him playing it was like what is this it's like fucking (laughs) you know a drummer and a bass player or drug, you know, that's it. Like it's just, and then Anthony screaming over top of it. Um, you know, that's it. You're, you're a hundred percent right. There can be no fat. Like everything is trimmed. Like it has to be, it has to be on point and even like subtle and slight mistakes are noticeable. Well, it was an awesome discussion and I really hope he ends up covering that juice world song because (laughs) <laughs> i don't know i always just imagine him singing it and it's fucking like it just sounds so good in my mind those lyrics are devastating though it really does I know. Right? very um if you like i i mean i'm sure you know we referenced it in the show but if you want to go listen to it it's uh juice world wishing well yes and you know last week was the anniversary, the anniversary of his yeah. death 
Yeah. yeah. I saw a bunch of people post about it on Instagram and I was like, that's fucking crazy. Do you remember <laughs> what was the one that you sent me? And I, I was so skeptical at first and I, it's like the, the front cover is like a, looks like a kind of like, you know, souped up car, like kind of doing a burnout. And I was like, this looks like a box cover for a really shitty PS2 game. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was uh, "Death Race for Love," there the second go. album. Yeah, you put it in his ear. Maybe it's there. The this day forward cover. Yes, I did like. I did like the fact that I specifically asked if he could get that done and make everybody do it. You, you know what I want to hear? I forget what your suggestion was. Now, what was it? He threw a couple out there. He said voice or fragile version or if i wore a mask which would be a good modern tie-in i would like to hear any of those i would like to hear a more circa flavored one like voice or fragile version or if the, or if they did a heavy one too that would be incredible i was thinking i want uh i want the breath yeah that one I, that, that's what i wanted that, that would be amazing too yeah members of circa survive if you hear this yeah. please band together and do a this day forward cover because it would make me and Tommy very happy. And what more What more of a reason do you need? None. Yeah. None whatsoever. Just for, for our sheer happiness. And don't yes. release it to anyone. It should be like that Wu-Tang album. Like they only gave it to that farmer bro dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're the sole proprietor. We, we, get this, we are the only people that get to listen to it. Well, it's Christmas week. What yeah. are you going to do? Uh, well, all our shopping is done. Uh, we're waiting for a couple things to come in the mail. Um, but mainly now is my giant pain in the ass is elf on the shelf. I fucking hate that because you have to change it every night. Yeah. And my kids are like, you know, the twins are seven now, so they go to bed at like eight 30. So don't you think you shouldn't do that? It like promotes the whole surveillance state. Uh, big government thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it makes them behave better. <laughs> they had so it re- actually works. Oh my god! So my wife found these uh, printable tickets. Somebody put them on Pinterest or some shit, right? Yeah. And you put the kid's name on there, and it comes up in this really cool, like, um, very like Christmassy, jolly font. But um, it's a report from the elf. And they had a horrible day in the morning. Uh, it was it like Tuesday of last week? So Wednesday morning, they woke up, and their first thing is they run downstairs, and they're like, "Where's Gumdrop?" Because that's the name of the elf. Yes. Where's Gumdrop? Where's Gumdrop? So they go looking for, her, and I don't hear anything. Usually, they go, "I found Gumdrop. She's over here." I didn't hear anything. And I was like, "What's going on?" So I like kind of like peek into the kitchen. And they're both sitting there. Evelyn's a much stronger reader than Ellie is right now. And Evelyn is running her finger across the note and reading it. And my wife put something on there like, you guys did a really great job with school. And I'm so happy that you guys are doing great in your classes. But I really want you guys to work together as a team. Because remember, you're twins. And I heard you fighting the other morning about who was going to. And I don't remember what the actual argument was about. But the girls were like, both eyebrows raised. like. <gasps> He saw that. So um, they were unbelievably well behaved for the next like 72 hours. <laughs> Put the fear of God in them for, or the fear of Santa in them for a second. Well, I'm not doing anything for Christmas this year. I will be with Romy and her child and our cats. And I will not be visiting my parents because I felt weird going down there for Thanksgiving. And I don't want... To catch the virus or give it to them. So it'll be my first Christmas, no travel, uh, no immediate family. And I think it's going to be pretty relaxing and pretty good. We are only going to go to Kelly's parents' house because like, they're quarantined the whole time anyway. So yes. we're going to head up there. That's the only... We usually do like a whole my cousin's house, all my neighbors near my mom's house. We go to my mom's house for Christmas Eve. We do all that stuff. We are doing nothing this year except for opening gifts at our house in the morning. And then we will be driving to the Poconos to spend the next couple days up there. Um, and then that's it. But I'm looking forward to 10 days off of work. So, Yeah, I'm, I would be looking forward to that. But I have this test to look forward to. So there will be no rest for me 
until 1231. And then if I pass the test, there will be rest. If I don't pass the test, I just have to keep studying. So who knows? Maybe this can continue on for another year. That would be fun. Yeah. You just keep keep it moving. In the, in the spirit of keeping it moving, we're going to move on to some viewer feedback and things people have been sending us. So let's get into it. We have an email from Mike Golan. Oh, boy. Yeah. What's he have to say? <laughs> he says, loving the recent episodes, guys. I can't believe Keith's equipment went out. Get it together, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, don't tell Keith, but you want to start a podcast? By the way, I'm a member of this thing. I paid my fees months ago. Keep the good content coming. All right. So we got another member. Thank you, Mike. I love it. Yeah. And uh, don't start a podcast with him. <laughs> <laughs> this is one is enough. I, I don't think I could. I think I, I, I dedicate just enough time to everything right now. I think throwing anything else into the mix would be a mistake. I could. I don't even want to think about it. It would be impossible. Like uh, when we did when we. When we recorded the Anthony episode, first of all, it was crazy to record that because it was three hours. I've We've never sat for three hours talking to somebody before. No. So by the time it was done, I was like, I felt crazy. And then I didn't sleep at all that night because I was obsessing. Like I was like, how am I going to put it up? Should I just put it all up at once? Should I break it up? And, you know, I felt insane the whole next day because I didn't sleep, but... You know, the, I went with the two episodes because, I don't know, if it, if it's over two hours, that makes me incredibly nervous. I don't like to do that. Yeah, I think I, I think the formula that we have now is that, like, short intro, long interview, shorter, like, you know, medium-sized outro. Um, I like that. I think the format works well. I think it's enough to do, like, a kind of recap at the end without going too far into detail. And I think it's, I, I like it, but I think you made the right decision with this one for sure. Plus, oh yes. Plus, you have so much on your plate right now with work and studying. To kind of like spread this apart with two episodes, we now you know have two epi- two weeks of episodes kind of like under our belt. That's why I was hoping he would agree to stay on with us for three hours. <laughs> I, here's the only thing: I think if we had started that a little bit earlier, he would have done four. Oh, dude, that's another thing I wanted to mention. We started. We 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 he, we all got on and just started talking, and yeah. I just had to hit record and then like get us to start, and then there was never an ending. Like I literally just had to hit the stop button. You could have I was kept, gonna. You yeah. did eventually just go. All right, Anthony, I'm hitting stop, and he didn't care. He just kept yeah. talking. He was just like, "All right, so I'm finishing this story. I don't give a shit what you say." <laughs> and then we st- and then we talked for another hour after that. Yeah. Yeah, it was, oh man, it was awesome. Well, because that's the thing people, I think people don't necessarily understand with this is like, when we're done, we have to stay online until the wave files are uploaded. So we have to sit here while they upload it. And sometimes that can take 10 minutes. Sometimes it can take a half an hour. Sometimes in Anthony's case, it was such a long episode. It took almost 40 minutes. Yeah. Our friend Tori C says that he's a member now. We've got another member added to the list of growing members and remember folks you're a member when you say you are once you say it that's it you're in yeah just self-declare yeah come on no membership fees none of that shit you just do it you just say it yeah yeah speak it into existence and then it's done and then uh we got a message from Oh, here's a message from Joe Rodriguez. Hey, guys, I just listened to an episode of your podcast today with Evan from Intuit Over It, and it was awesome. I subscribed to you guys and just wanted to reach out. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. Oh, and check out his band. Check out his band, Lone Again. Thanks for writing us, Joe. And then, let's see. We got a lot of great feedback on the episode with Casey Iodine and the relaunch of Iodine Recordings. That was awesome. Also. I think there was, oh, yo, it was so funny. I was looking at the messages and you know, like sometimes you read them and sometimes I read them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I saw you exchanging messages with that guy, Evan, about like, he was sending you links to Kirkland clothing <laughs> from from Costco. <laughs> no, he like wrote like a really like nice thing that was like, yo man, I'm into Costco too. Total dad move, but I'm on the same page. And I was like, yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. Like, 
it's I'm wearing Costco pants right now, bro. I don't care. Like I, I don't like they fit nice. They last for a long time. And the, the best part about them is, is that if I spill something on them or they get ripped, like I ripped a pair at the skate park last weekend and $15 later, I got a new pair. Listen, I, I support you, Tommy. I support you. And the Costco thing seems to be coming a thing. And I, I find that really hilarious. I like that we have a uh, built in jokes now, but listen, we're out of time. I just want to thanks everybody for listening. I just want to say happy holidays. Be safe out there. Be responsible. Take care of each other. Listen to us. Subscribe to us. Like us. Help spread the word. We're in this thing together. Tommy? No, you said it great. That's it. Happy holidays to everybody. Enjoy yourselves. And most importantly, be safe. Yes. So thanks, everybody, for listening. And until next time. Yay!